guys, Chris Tiernet here with Mike Katz for this edition of Strategy. What's up, Mike? How you doing, Christy? Thanks so much for coming. So I figured today we could talk about playing against the amateur and playing against a calling station. So in the World Series of Poker, you'll find that the field is probably pretty, pretty weak. There's a lot of players who maybe this is their first time playing a big tournament. So when you notice, or wh what kind of things do you look for to know that they are a beginning player? Well, I only lasted two levels. How do I really know anything? No. Um, <laughs> the, there's a lot of bad players, and you kind of have to figure out. There's different ways. Like, these people have satellited in. Certain, some of them are very, very tight. And, you know, you can really get them off any hand you want by just playing, you know, betting big and stuff. And there's other players that are just never going to fold. And you really need to value bet and, you know, really just, like, try and get their, like, I don't know, get their chips with, like, marginal hands and mm -hmm. you know it's very easy to accumulate chips against them you got to play a lot of like small pots when I mean, you have big hands just get okay uh, what are some telltale signs that someone might be a beginner well they sit down at the table all confused <laughs> they like sit in the wrong seat a lot of times and you know they throw the, their bet their bet sizes they throw different amounts in and just talking to them a lot of times I'll talk to the players and you'll realize they'll be like all excited you know and you can tell it's not their first time at the table mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what about when you're playing um, the clueless person? Is, and you, it's hard to get a read on them. Do you want to be playing only strong hands against someone that just... They're, if they're so clueless about their hand, it's going to be hard for you to gauge the, the strength of their hand, right? Yeah, a lot of times you want to just, you know, control the pot against them unless you have a really big hand. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not going to do anything elaborate and really, like, check, raise, bluff you. So, you know, you usually know where you are in the hand and unless you have a really big hand. You know, you could... You know, you can usually accumulate chips against these type of players, but you want to, like, you don't really want to let the pocket out of control. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what about when you're playing a calling station, someone who's so sticky? And I feel like when, when I see people playing against a calling station, they'll, they'll be playing not as good a hands, and, like, sometimes the calling station's going to wake up with a hand, even though they're calling with such marginal hands. So, so how do you want to play against them? Yeah, a lot of, of times people will forget that they still have the same likelihood of having the winning hand when it comes, you know, one person's going to have a better hand half of the time. Mm -hmm. So you really have to, again, somebody that's just going to call you down, you know, you have to, like, put them on a range of hands throughout the hand. And then, you know, I'll value bet very thin sometimes on the end and mm -hmm. value bet myself. Like, they'll have the winning hand, you'll be like, wow, how did he not ever raise me here? Yeah. So sometimes you, you know, you give away a, little, a few chips, but, like, when you know they're calling, it's hard not to put in that value bet with, like, you know, top pair, sometimes like a little bit better, you know, like a little bit less, like second pair. But, mm -hmm. you know, they're not going to check raise you, so you can't really lose your stack. But. Okay, so value betting is much more important against a calling station. Because, yeah. you know, they're probably not going to raise you and put you in a marginal situation. Well, if they raise you, they have you beat, so, mm -hmm. you know, usually they're just a calling station. Okay. Um, and against a calling station, you probably advise against slow playing, right? Yeah, well, yeah, if you have a big hand, you want to just get it in. You know, mm -hmm. you know they're going to call you. Just You want to bet a little bit bigger and, you know, try and build the pot and then, you know, give up some, give up some fake tells and hopefully they'll call you in the end, you know. Okay. And I, a mistake I see a lot of players making is there's a calling station at the table and all of a sudden the calling station is betting. And, and they still call down with the top pair, but usually, doesn't that usually mean strength? I mean, from a calling station who's, like, betting into you? Yeah, but when a calling station is betting, you know, you should really... Be careful. A lot of times I'll put in, like, uh, against, like, a weak player, I'll put in a very small raise if I'm, like, really not sure where I am because I don't want to call his bet. Like, let's say he leads out on the turn. I don't want to call the turn bet and then a big bet on the river from somebody that I don't think, don't know if he's capable of bluffing. But, you know, like, you might, like, might want to just, like, put in almost a minute raise. They won't realize that you're trying to control the pot. And now mm -hmm. even if they have two players, they're just going to call and then check the river. And then you can just check behind, you know, because you're not really sure where you are and, you, or, you know, you want to see it really cheap. It's a good way to, like, See the river cheap. I mean, against a good player, they might kind of realize what you're doing. But. Against the beginning player who, you know, sometimes beginning players, they'll have top pair, and, they'll, and you can read only strength from them. Does that ever mess with your mind? Because you're like, I have no repair. I think it's good. But this guy, there's no way he thinks he doesn't have the best yeah, hand. Yeah, that, that's, that's definitely a problem sometimes. I, um, sometimes. Like, some people, you know, will just, like, I'll still, like, if I have, like, two kings on ten high and somebody's showing strength, like, a lot of times, you know, you might be like, this person has a set, but against a bad player, you're like, he really might think he has the best hand with ace-ten here. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, sometimes I'll lose value because I'll try and control the puck because I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. You know, depending on the pre-flop action and stuff, like if I'm really going to just, you know, get it in. But, you know, a lot of times I'll just control the puck and then they'll flip over ace-10 and you'll be kind of mad, like, you know, yeah. but you avoid, like, losing a big pot, really, if you're unsure. Like, if you have, like, a big enough hand, you know, then I'm willing to go with it. But All right. Is it, do you have any advice for, for some people who are playing against amateurs in defense of trying trying not to be confused by their confusion? Well, you can't let it, you can't let it tilt you. Like, a lot mm -hmm. of people will get mad and be like, what is it, how is this person playing like this? And just keep betting mm -hmm. really big, and, you know, they're going to call you down. And, you know, you really, like, and then you start bluffing the clowns, which really just doesn't make sense. You know, like, there's times to do it and stuff. And, like, you know, sometimes, like, if you show a bluff, you, even if they call you, like, even if they call you in a small pot, that's fine, because now they're going to call you the whole way. Like, I'll mm -hmm. definitely get picked off a lot in little pots mm -hmm. by, like, a clown, but... You know, in a big pot, you, you usually want to have the winning hand against somebody that's going to call you down. And some people will just get stubborn and just think that they could just bet bigger. But, you know, these people will call with, like, unbelievable things, yeah. you know. So. so would you advise against not, usually not trying to bluff a beginning player, unless you can tell that it's their first tournament and they just don't want to go broke? Like, most of the time, would you advise not bluffing? You're saying yeah. against the... A uh, beginning player? Well, beginning players, I mean, you have many beginning players that are just playing so tight, want to try and move up to the money, want to finish, you know, top 50 when, mm -hmm. you know, 27 are getting paid. It doesn't make any sense, but somehow they're trying to move up and right. showing you that they're folding big hands. So, like, you just want to exploit their blinds, of course. But there's, you know, two different, well, many different kinds of bad players. But right. it, it's great playing, like, when the blinds are big, playing against the tight bad players or new players because you're going to just, you know raise their blinds and if they raise you can re-raise them and they'll show you hands like ace queen ace king like i've had that in this tournament and you know people are just folding monsters and it's like unbelievable it's clearly good but yeah awesome well thank you so much nice. you're welcome thanks christy arnett for carpool tv with mike katz